Hello and welcome in this video where we are going to implement a road manager. So this script will be responsible for placing road on our map and at some point it will be responsible for creating a longer paths. So we will search for the shortest path between two points and place the road there. So first let's start from going to the scripts folder, right click, create, first we will create a road manager script. Okay, and we will need another script that will be used by the road manager. So let's right click, create G sharp script. Let's call it placement manager. So placement manager will be responsible for actually placing game objects on the map and storing the informations about our grids. Let's open up the road manager. Okay, great. Let's delete the pre-created code Let's create public placement manager and let's call it placement manager. Okay, let's create public list of vector three ints as we are operating on the vector three int values. Let's call it temporary placement positions. Equals new list of vector three ints. Great. Now, in this class, we will first start from creating a public void road place road method. So let's type public void place road, open parenthesis, and let's pass to it vector three int position. Okay. So this method will be responsible for placing road objects on our map. First, we will need to check if our placement manager and we are going to create a method check if position in bound so let's pass to it position equals false okay and we do not have this method so alt enter and generate this method it might be seen as a bit of redundant method because we are blocking our player flicking outside of the plane that represents our map, but at the same time, we are creating a grid inside our placement manager, so our graph. And if our graph is smaller than our map, then we will click and access, want to access a position that is outside of the bounds of our grid. So that's why we are going to return if our grid placed in the, our placement manager, so our graph doesn't contain this many fields so if we click on our plane but this is outside of the bounds of the uh, map that we have decided to create so uh, the width and height of our grid we are going to simply return next we will need to also create if our placement manager and we are going to check if the position is free so check if position is free let's pass to the position and again if this is false we will simply return. Again, we do not have this method, so let's alt enter and generate it inside our placement manager. Now, this is why I really like the object oriented programming paradigm because you can assume that the placement manager has those methods and we just work with the road manager and then we can simply go to placement manager and implement those methods. For now, we are not going to add to our list because this will be important when we want to place multiple road cells to create a path between two points. So if placement manager agrees that we can place on this cell uh, the road structure, let's call placement manager dot place temporary structure. And we are going to pass to it position. After opening the brackets, let's pass position. And we are going to pass the game object, so let's call it road straight. And let's pass to it cell type, which is the enum from our grid class. And let's type road. Okay, we do not have road straight prefab, so let's create this here. So above the place road method, let's create public game object and let's paste the name road straight. Okay, and this is the last method that we will need, so Alt-Enter and generate it in our placement manager. 
And that's it for the implementation of our road manager. Let's go to our game manager. I have it opened in the Visual Studio. And here, when we are calling handle mouse click, we will uh, above create public road manager, road manager. Okay. And we are going to call in the handle mouse click road manager dot place road and pass to it the position. Simple as that. Now we are able to call our road manager. Now what we will need to do is to go to our placement manager. So let's go back to Unity first. Since we are here, let's create two game objects in our hierarchy. Let's create road manager. And let's create placement manager. Uh, not inside the road manager, outside of it. Let's reset its position just for the sake of it, for knowing that they are all in 0, 0, 0 position. On the road manager, we can drag our road manager and our game object, let's rename it to placement manager. Great. And let's drag to it our placement manager script. And we can assign to our road manager the placement manager. So let's drag it. And we can assign the road straight prefab from the prefabs. So let's open the prefabs, road, and we have road straight or uh, street straight. And the last thing we will need to do is to assign to game manager our road manager. Great. So everything is assigned, save the scene and let's go to scripts folder and let's open up the placement manager script. Okay, great. We have our pre-created methods. Let's delete the start and update. And as I have previously mentioned, our placement manager will have the reference to our graph that will store the data about our map. First of all, we will need to create its uh, dimensions. So public int width and height and this will be set in the placement manager game object through the inspector and it will be important where our game uh, where our placement manager and our uh, map is placed we are not going to account for the offset we are going to simply place the map and the placement manager in the spot 000 of course we could add an offset and place it anywhere in the world but for now let's create this simple implementation so after having the, the dimensions, we need to create the grid. So grid. And let's call it placement grid. Okay. First, we will need to create our start method. So start. And let's instantiate our grid. So placement grid equals new grid. And we are going to pass our width and height that we have added to the inspector as the parameters for the placement manager. So now we have our placement grid of width and height, and this will be filled with the vertices of type empty. So we can safely assume that we can place a structure on any of those spaces. So now we will implement those two check methods. First, check if position is in bound. We are going to check if our position dot x is greater or equal to zero and our position dot x is less than width and if our position dot z is greater or equal to zero and if our position is less than height and that's why we will need to place this uh, map and uh, placement manager in point zero zero actually the map because it will get the response uh, the respective position zero zero and height and width to check our graph. Now this will be position Z, height, great, and we are going to return true if the position meets those criteria, else we are going to return false. So this allows us to be safe that we have placed our structure or want to place our structure on the position when our graph is present. Next, let's create check if position is free, and this will return. And we will create an additional method here. Let's call it check if position is of type. And we are going to pass cell type dot empty because we will need this method later. So alt enter generated. And here we are going to simply return our placement grid 
square brackets and we will need to have it a position so let's pass to this check if position of type let's pass to it position and let's copy the parameter from the check if position is free and paste it be uh, before the cell type in the check if position is of type i'm going to rename it to have the capital p for the position and now we will return our placement grid pass the position dot x and position dot z and is equal to the type uh, so the instead of empty let's type type and let's check if this is of type type okay so if you do not understand this part let's go to our grid right click on it and go to the definition and we can see that the grid if is simply an array of cell types and if we slide it down we are overriding the index operator of our grid class so when we type square brackets we can pass to it int and int and return the grid so the cell array at that position so this just makes our life easier okay let's go back to placement manager okay and last method that we have actually uh, yeah the last method that is place temporary structure so here we can instead of throwing an exception call placement grid assuming that the position is correct since our road manager has checked it we are going to pass to it position x just uh, the same as we passed above in the check if position is of type so position x and position z and we want to set it to be of type cell type so let's again change from the road to type and let's set it to be of type type so basically what we did was assign to our graph that this position is of type road next what we are going to create is game object let's call it new structure equals instantiate so we are instantiating an object of type road straight at the position so the position where we have clicked and we are going to pass to it quaternion dot identity okay let's save it let's go back to unity okay let's find our placement manager clicking f on our map and we can see that this is that side okay and this is placed in the zero zero position and our map first position is zero zero so you can see that our plane is placed correctly i think everything is assigned uh, but the width and height so let's see how many of those do we have here so one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have 15 spaces, so let's type 15 for width and height, since this is the uh, square, uh, our map is square. And we have our placement manager, uh, and it will create a graph of width and height 15. So let's click play, and let's see if we will be able to place our objects on our map. So let's click somewhere, and we can see that our road cells are being created. And of course, we can see the creation and we can see that we are debugging the statement. Let's start again to see if we are not creating double roads when we have uh, already placed the road. So let's slide down in the hierarchy. Let's place it. We have one speech and let's click on it again. We are getting the position, but we are not creating the road straight prefab. So it only creates road straight prefab if there is no road already placed on this spot. And you can see already that there is an issue where our road doesn't meet the neighbors so we can click only and place the one type of a road we will account for it a little bit later but for now this is kind of a success where we can place our objects on the ground so in the next video we will create a structure model class to change the prefab of already placed structures.